So what did you think? Let's rank this film on the K-Jometer. All right, that leads us over to the most important question of the episode. Um, I want to formally announce that we are officially retiring the chalkboard on the uh, K-Jometer because we have Aww. completely run out of room. <laughs> Too long. <Yeah. laughs> the next yeah. season, you'll see something else there, but uh, chalkboard is out. <laughs> Yeah, I was um, wondering when you were going to retire that bad Yeah, point. <laughs> I've had to like scrunch the names yeah. a few times. <laughs> so it's time. Yeah, it's got to be retired. Yeah. So next yeah, season, you'll see something else. Maybe something fancy. Something fancy. Um, so, uh, Vince, where does Con Air from 1997 rate on your cageometer? All right, we'll keep it uh, sweet and short. Uh, give them seven. Or give the movie a seven. Uh, it's a fun popcorn blockbuster. Uh, not great. A lot of plot holes as we discussed. A lot of questions, but it's just a fun, stupid, silly movie. I uh, I enjoyed it the first time I saw it. I enjoyed it again rewatching it. Uh, like you said, pacing is pretty decent. The third act does with with the timing of everything at the airfield get a little murky, but uh, I still thought it was paced a lot better than some of the other films we watched. So I'll give it a seven as far as Cage. Um, I'll give him a seven as well. I, I don't think he did a lot in this movie, but he didn't do a lot to distract me from the <coughs> performance in film. He kind of really felt underutilized in the movie. Mm. It could have really been anybody playing that character. And it would have, I think, flowed the same if they would have portrayed it in the same manner where he's just more of a tool for you as the viewer to move through this storyline. Um, but it's him, you know, he had a, his little quirky moments, which I loved, but ultimately I don't think he did anything revolutionary and I don't think he did anything to really detract from the performance either. So seven on both movie and cage. Right on. Leads us to Nigel. Where does uh, Con Air rate on your cageometer? I'll be a little harsher um, on it as I thought it was, it had its moments, but I thought it was mostly stupid and <laughs> <laughs> like it was, it was kind of stupid fun, but if I'm taking a critical eye to it, there's just a lot of stuff created for plot contrivances and just to make things happen and fit just so they can fit with their ridiculous premise of yeah. it. So for me, the movie uh, it's a five out of 10. It's like middle of the road. It's not all awful. Uh, I don't think it's, it's like just on the cusp of being good. I think if it was less stupid in places, it might be a little bit better. <laughs> but uh, I mean, honestly, like I said before, I was um, <laughs> like, I'm struggling to remember parts of it when I saw it. And, and it's just like, I didn't even watch it that long ago. It was only like two weeks ago or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but I just, it's not that memorable to me. I don't really know why people love it as much as they do, especially compared to other ones that came out at the time, like face off, which I think was a much more, memorable <laughs> movie and better put together, which is weird to say about face off, but um, yeah. yeah, it's just a kind of a middle of the road one for cage. I give him a five out of 10 as well for a lot of the same reasons that Vince said, I felt like he was underutilized and he didn't really do a lot for me th to make the role feel like it was something that benefited from having Nick cage do it. Um, and like we said at the beginning, he kind of had to invent that background of him being an army ranger. So apparently the character was even more of a blank slate before he got that kind of a backstory to it. And it really felt like it, it didn't really feel like I get a lot of, okay, he's a, he's a, <clears throat> our understanding of him is he's a good guy. He respects women and uh, he's not a criminal and that's basically it. And he can kill people or he's a badass. <laughs> and that's basically all we're given and at the beginning. And that's all we get throughout the whole movie. And Aside from having like the glorious main, <laughs> it doesn't really, just really do much to stand out. I thought his his accent was kind of distracting and was bad. And <laughs> hey, he went to Alabama to study the people. Yeah, and I find that weird. It pulled me out of it. Like, why? Why does he have to do an accent? It would have maybe been a little bit better if he was just allowed to be more of a natural speaking voice for him. But so he could say things boy, like "hummingbird." And stuff like that <laughs> yeah so yeah it's a, it's a performance that didn't really do much for me it's not that memorable I, I i i don't know why this is one of those um movies that people kind of chalk up as one of their favorites you know it's it's just it's not as as um oh, what's the word i'm trying to say it doesn't have as much impact as other ones especially from that time period that he did 
Yeah. Uh, I think it's on the lower end of the of the trilogy, I guess, if we're going to call it that. With Con I would Air say this is the weakest the of the trilogy. Yeah, yeah. If you're calling it a trilogy, you know, but and it did feel like he was a secondary character for a lot of the movie, like yeah. which is bizarre because he's the protagonist. But it, it feels like a lot of the stuff happens with him off <laughs> without him being involved. There's just a lot of other things going on, and he, they mm. just bring him in to do some badass stuff every once in a while. But yeah, it doesn't really feel like the movie earns the, the, uh, the, it doesn't really sell me on the, he's the savior of this. He's going to save the day. Like why, why does he deserve to be the one that does that? You know, it, it, it's, it's kind of a weak character to me. Yeah. Um, on my cageometer, I kind of split the difference between you guys. <laughs> um, I gave it a six out of 10. Um, yeah, I have a lot of the same complaints. Um, the plot is just like, it's just one thing happens, so another thing can happen, and then things are very like coincidental. Um, that being said, though, it's it, it is a really fun movie. Um, I think this movie is like weirdly iconic of Cage, um, yeah. and I think it's just because of the hair and I, I think so too, yeah. <laughs> and the fact that he's you know he's like this is the most in shape that Nick Cage has ever been in a movie. He actually you know, talked about it in. Uh, there was like a behind the scenes thing that he, he got his body fat to the lowest it's ever been in his entire <laughs> life. And he was actually working out in between scenes to keep that physique through the whole movie. Um, I, it's not really necessary for the character, but it was like, I think it was at the point where like he had been in the rock and they were kind of grooming him as this next action star. Cause he hadn't been really known as a big action star before that and this was his first like starring role as the the badass in the uh the action movie and then face off after this um but yeah (laughs) it's not a great movie but it is a fun movie um and that's kind of the same rating i gave face off is like it's not great and a lot of things happen just so that other things can happen but it is a really fun movie and i did find myself enjoying it Um, each time that I watched it, I hadn't watched it in a long time, but I, I did really enjoy it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm a sucker for these crappy popcorn movies. (laughs) (laughs) I know I am. (laughs) But like, I just love loud, dumb movies. These types of like Michael Bay movies, I find usually detestable. Um, you know, this isn't a Michael Bay movie, but this is a Michael Bay style movie. This is a Bruckheimer film. Um, but I didn't find it detestable i actually really liked uh diamond dog and and cyrus the virus um i thought dave Chappelle was pretty funny in his moments that he had like each one of the characters kind of had their own quirks and their own development and they Mm -hmm. they were unique to each other pretty good yeah um cusack uh, and and i didn't really love um could have kind of done without that I feel like a a different actor might have done a better job in that. But, you know, Cusack usually is uh, he's pretty great, like charming B character who can kind of pull you in. And in this one, he kind of just annoyed me. Maybe because he was just having to fight with that dickhead the entire movie. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> to like, get anything yeah. done. And he's yeah, a secondary so. protagonist that's not as interesting yeah. as what's going on in the main storyline. So, yeah. yeah. And as you said, he kind of like is the primary protagonist in some parts of the movie. Kind of ways, then, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so it's kind of like Cage and Cusack kind of share that. And then, you know, John Malkovich is the bad guy throughout. And he actually ends up having more screen time, I feel like, sometimes than, <laughs> than Nick mm-hmm. Cage. But I, I'll stand with the six. Uh, split the difference. Um, not the best, but not terrible. I enjoyed it. Uh, for Cage, I gave him a six as well. Um, so again, kind of splitting the difference, like I did find him, uh, he pulled me in and I did find him, um, good as a protagonist. Uh, I, I do feel like he brings a lot to the role, but I also feel like that that accent really pulled me out. (laughs) Um, even if he did study people from Alabama, like that is such a, like, uh, not it's not a good sounding accent for like yeah. some southern charm guy and he said that he it was his choice to put him in mobile to be from from alabama like could have chosen somewhere else in the south <laughs> and like given him more of a like 
Savannah accent or something, <laughs> not Alabama. <laughs> um, uh, I did feel like he was he was cool in his parts, but yeah, there were moments that really pulled me out, like the part where he's I'm going home, son, and he like puts his. <laughs> like, it's just such a weird scene. Um, there's a lot of moments where his accent just kind of flipped and was sounded a little different and, and, uh, I don't know. I, I'm trying to justify my six here. <laughs> <laughs> you just love the man. But I, yeah, I just, I don't know. I like him in this. Um, it, it's hard to describe why I liked him in this. Um, I want to, I genuinely wanted to see him win. Um, but at the same time, he wasn't, I don't know. He didn't really pull me in all that much. I guess the six is fair for that. Yeah, I'm sticking <laughs> with the six. <laughs> I don't have to justify it. It's just my gut, <laughs> man. It's my gut. I justify myself to you people. <laughs> 